All right, hi guys, Ryan back here with you again. Um, back home here, obviously. And uh, noticed I've had some issues with the uh, truck throwing uh, miscellaneous uh, DPF SCR codes here. Uh, last couple of weeks seems to kind of intensified on that last trip for some reason. And I um, actually did a did a force region over in Montana uh, when I was stopped in the morning because uh, it was, kept throwing a couple of different things on the uh, PDI in there. Um, so I did a regen for about 45-50 minutes, then I was, it just something smelled like it was hot. Um, so I was kind of looking around, even though that's it, normal for the most part, it smells like something's on fire. <laughs> but um, didn't see any smoke, but I was kind of fiddling around with the, uh, the wiring harness down here underneath for the DPF. And uh, you can't, I'm going to take this, these steps off here in a second, um, but I, I, when this, the cabs there, the cab don't have any air in it right now, so it's going to drop. But you could, I could see in one of my plugs, uh, to one of my knock sensors here, um, there's actually a bare, it's the insulation's coming off the wire there. It's not burnt, it's just, uh, it's somehow it's just separated. And so I'm thinking, um, that could be an issue throughout the whole harness down here. There is a lot of heat there. Um, it's down close to the road. Uh, so I talked to my dealer up here and I ended up ordering a, just got a whole new wiring harness for the whole DPF. It's all, there's a big socket up here, which I'll show you in a minute. And I actually got the new harness here. It was kind of pricey. It was like $650, I think with tax out the door and all that. Um, we were about $700. Um, but if I've, like I said, if I've got a bare wire up here, there's probably problems throughout that. And that could be why I'm getting a lot of those weird codes and stuff. So, um, you know, not, I don't like just throwing parts of stuff, but in this case, I mean, the main things with these emission systems are sensors and wiring. Um, so I, I, I've get, been getting a funny reading out of one of my, uh, my SCR outlet temperature up on the, uh, on the, on my PDI there when I'm watching it. It's been kind of way out of whack, uh, a couple hundred degrees higher, a couple hundred degrees lower than everything else. So um, I went ahead and got that sensor as well, but it could be in the wiring also. So... I'm gonna go ahead and take this the steps off. So I mean, if you got a T660 or a, a T680, I believe it's the same. Uh, you just take these these three bolts out on each step, six bolts total, and this whole uh, panel here come off, and the DPF and all that's right behind. I don't know if we have to take the back panel off or not uh, to get to what we need to, but um, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off and see what we got here, and hopefully this will be a, a quick uh, change out. Uh, and, change oil as well today and, and that'll uh, hopefully be pretty well it but uh, I'll go ahead and take this off real quick and we'll see what we got behind here all right so we got the steps taken off and uh, had to I had to start the truck up and air it up to get a little bit more clearance with the cab and um, actually put a little block of wood back there behind the back and I'll show you just some it does bleed off a little bit um, you hear that wet wind valve there but uh, I just stuck a block of wood in there to, in case it does drop down while we're sitting here because this might take a little while. So, um, i actually show you the new harness. So this is $700 basically, time you throw tax and all that in. Not very complicated. Uh, we got here the DEF dosing valve plug. Get your SCR temperature sensors. Uh, the Knox sensor here, and this is the one up there that I seen the bare wire on. I think on this orange wire, it's got the, the insulations broke through. Then um, these go to that little module on the DPF for your temperature sensors and your differential pressure sensors. And then just a cannon plug up top, so it's really not too involved. Uh, a lot easier than an engine harness or something. And it looks like everything's relatively easy. To get to I'm going to take this shield off here it just has self-tapping screws I took they they all broke off so uh, we'll just have to zip some new self-tappers in there once we get this thing uh, back together <clears throat> so there's the top of the harness uh, the cannon plugs right back there so uh, I think everything's pretty relatively easy to, to get to. So I'm going to take this panel off here, this heat shield, and just start taking this apart. And then this one, the new harness came with all new clips and everything. This one here is broke off. Um, so there might be some bad wiring in there where that's been rubbing from that 
it should have been connected up here. That new harness has a new new connector, so we'll take all those off and uh, put the new one in and, and see what we got here. So I'll get to it and we'll be back in a minute. All right, so I got the old harness off here, and uh, one other thing you're gonna need is a uh, an inch and seven eight socket. Uh, to get this big plastic nut off. It's kind of tight up in there where it came out of. And uh, I, I wouldn't recommend trying to get in there with a pair of channel locks or something. Because if you damage this, it's going to make it uh, that much harder to get off. I didn't even have to put a, a ratchet on this. I was going to just stick it on and, and turn it off by hand. But it was just kind of awkward the way that it's set back up in there. Right. So you can see the hole that it goes in. Right there. And notice this does have a flat spot up top. That way this is, and there's a flat spot on the socket itself right here. That way it's indexed in there, right? Because uh, you got a, the other plug from the truck harness has to hook in that a certain way, so it needs to be in there the right way. But it only go in one way. So I wanted to show you what I saw in Montana that concerned me with this, and that was this hole in this wire right here off of the uh, the knock sensor down there and uh, you can already see it's kind of hard to see there there is there's some green in there some corrosion on the wiring so that can cause that not to re I get a false reading or not to read properly from that sensor as uh, some other places I mean these none of these wires appear to be broke through but uh, they're they're not going to be protected you know because this this uh, anti-heat material here um, so a couple other little spots on here this is the one going down to the uh, DEF dosing valve so, so yeah overall I mean it's not I mean I, I probably could have cut that out and put a butt connector or something in it but it would just it would just keep deteriorating and, and corroding more so I'm gonna go ahead and get the uh, I mean it, it took me like 10 minutes to take this thing out so it's pretty pretty simple um, I just had to run back to the house and grab this socket to get that out, so that kind of wasted some time there. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the new one in here and uh, clean these terminals out. I use this contact electrical contact cleaner to, to clean out all the uh, contacts, all the plugs. Uh, you don't want to use any dielectric grease. I mean, you can use dielectric grease on these seals, but you can see there's some on here. And uh, that stuff... Uh, it's good for the seals to keep moisture and stuff out, but it can actually, if it gets in between the contacts, it's a non-conductive material since it's silicone, so it can actually cause it not to read properly as well. So I'm going to clean all those out and uh, and get this thing back together. So we'll throw it on and we'll be back in a minute. All right, guys. So why I was in here, I got the harness all hooked up, and like I said, I've had. Uh, some abnormal readings in my opinion from the um the outlet side scr temp sensor so this is the sensor there's two of them on it there's an inlet side it has a blue plug instead of a brown plug the outlet side's a brown plug and uh you're gonna see these type of connectors on a lot of this stuff on these trucks and there's a little tiny lock in here so this one's open right now and i'm not going to close it until i get it in there but if you were trying to get these off, uh, you can kind of see there's that little tab. You got to take a paper clip or something, and you got to push that little, see that little piece in there? It sticks out farther when it's locked. But you got to push that back towards the, towards the other end of the plug here, and then push this white piece out, slide it out um, to get it to lock in. Now, when you put it back together, you just slide this in, and this will push in, which I'm not going to do it right now because um, I don't want to lock it because um, but they can be a pain sometimes uh, but this won't until you get this out like this is now this piece here it won't push you have to push this down you'll hear it click when it when you push it down and then you can pull the plug out um, but what, as this is right now you can just push this in when it's in and this then this will lock if it's in correctly if, if it's plugged in all the way so um, so you'll see some of these will be red on some of these connectors but uh, like I said, you got to get a little tiny screwdriver or a paper clip or a little tiny Allen wrench or something and push that tab towards the wire into this plug. And then you can push that through. So they're kind of tricky. I'll show you where this um, 
there's the outlet. It actually broke loose really. Those are a 14 millimeter wrench. Uh, so it broke loose really. I already got it loose. So I'll pull that out and I got it unplugged back there. Um, I figured I might as well go ahead and do it while, I, while I've got that shield and everything off. So there's the old one. So it's not too distorted. I mean, I've seen them a lot worse. But um, we'll change that out. Uh, so here's the inlet one right here on this end. And like I said, that has a blue plug right there. So they're all color coded. They got different lengths of wire. The uh, DPF temp sensors on, on the bottom are the same way. Um, so I'm gonna put that uh, that new sensor in. Then we'll hook that cannon plug up there. And uh, when you guys put that in, make sure that big nut that I was talking about with the socket, don't put a ratchet on, just tighten it, this is hand tight is all you need because it's got that big that big spring type washer on there. So it, uh, you don't want to over tighten it because that's all plastic and you can tear that stuff up. But I'll show you the down here at the bottom of the harness so we got hooked in where the DPF sensors come in. So there's those red plugs, and now you can kind of see that little tab. So you have to push that towards the wires, that little little deal there. If you then then pull this, then pull this out at the same time, and then you can press this down and pull this out. So so like I said, this is the DPF differential pressure sensors right here, as you can see, and uh, then this goes up to the temperature sensors. All the temperature sensors come in, and those are all color coded. Um, there's three of them on the DPF down here. So I got that in. I got to put some zip ties on this stuff down here. It's the the probe there for the knock sensor, which we replaced that not too long ago. But uh, I'll go ahead and get this all wrapped up, put that sensor in, and then uh, we'll go ahead and put that shield back on. I have to get some self tapping screws for that, and we'll go start the truck up and see what we got. Alright, so I got everything hooked up over there, and I uh, started the truck up, everything's running, but I wanted to show you guys one thing on this sensor, that I was just looking at it closer, and you can see that's been wearing on that little plate in there, it's actually worn through the two wires, so my uh, suspicions about this sensor were, uh, were correct, I guess. Uh, so we got the new one in, everything looks to be running hot, straight, and normal. Uh, so I got the shroud, that uh, heat shield on, everything, all the uh, little keepers in there, did some sh uh, string tying and all that. And uh, everything looks pretty good. So now I'm going to put the steps back on, and uh, that will pretty much conclude this thing. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, like I said uh, a minute ago, I'll we'll throw the steps back on here, get it buttoned up, and uh, then I gotta do a service on this thing here. So it's Tuesday, and uh, I gotta get out of town here pretty soon again. So I just wanted to make sure. I I know a lot of times uh, I procrastinate anyway to the last minute, so I hope um, you know this time we we didn't get that far. Uh, so I always recommend if you're gonna do something like this, make sure you got a couple days just in just in case something goes wrong. You gotta order something, you gotta go back, and I mean try not to do a project like this when you're leaving the next morning or something because uh, you might put yourself in a bad situation luckily I got a couple days now but um, I got a lot of other stuff I got to get done here in the next couple days so I'm kind of glad to be done with this uh, got rid of my oil uh, took it down to my uh, advanced auto parts down here in town and uh, I had like 21 gallons and you know, it's all it actually took all of it I thought I was gonna have to drive to three different places so sometimes you get lucky with that and um, we've got a, an advance uh, O'Reilly's and um, AutoZone, they'll all take oil, use the oil from you. Most of them limit you to like five gallons per day, but I was kind of, I have a pretty good relationship with down with the Advance down there, so they end up taking it all for me. But um, other than that, it's, uh, like I said, I'm gonna throw this thing back together, change the oil and the oil filters, fuel filters in this, and uh, grease it real quick. And uh, so that'd be pretty much a done deal here. But uh, yeah, the main things that go wrong with these systems, I mean, the hardware really, there's not a lot there. It's mainly uh, your wiring and your sensors. So that's what you got to look at, especially if you're running up north uh, in the salt and stuff like that. That copper wiring, 
or even some have aluminum there's aluminum wiring in some places which is even worse and uh, they just don't they don't mix very well so you can you can have a lot of problems by or just by something loose and chafing it'll throw in it when you hit a bump um, it could throw a code and you know you erase it and it, when you hit another bump it does it again so that, that might be some of the problems I was having so we'll find out on this next trip uh, here we're got a little windows headed out to uh, gonna go out to El Paso or Texas uh, Arizona California and actually Nevada too so eight uh, seven stops I believe on that one uh, pay the Landstar gross rate on it's like eight thousand dollars so one of the better loads I've had I mean we'll probably be on it for six days six or seven days or so so we'll have about a week or so in it but uh, it puts me pretty good revenue after all said and done the Landstar gets their cut uh, you know I get uh, get mine the fuel comes out I mean I think we'll still probably be around four thousand forty five hundred dollars for basically uh, a week's work and uh, so the truck truck payments already paid for the month and all that so so we're good to go but uh like I said I hope you all enjoyed the video hope that might help you out give you some insight on some things out there on these uh, DPF SCR systems and uh, the wiring sensors and whatnot so uh, like I said hit the bell for the update subscribe uh, hit, and uh, hit the thumbs up for the like and we'll see you all next time